Number three, uh, this attack is happening in 2017 and it's called the Equifax data breach. Now, guys, I know that this one shook the entire world, right? Equifax, due to their nature, they handle very sensitive data. So it was all over the news. Then we uh, we have the um, uh, their stock plummeting 4% after one year. So they continue to go down. If we look at the, this particular table, we will see what type of data was exposed, right? So you guys can see how sensitive this data is. Now, if we look further, we even have the Federal Trade Commission from America coming in and uh, discussing about this particular breach. So literally this one made the entire US population freeze. And luckily for the Europe and outside of the US, we didn't have too many people using Equifax, but I believe there were some. If we look on Google, I know it's a big count of searches, but it's still not close to WannaCry, right? So WannaCry guys was, I, I believe it was the first generation, uh, generation five attack. Uh, now, if we look a bit at this attack, of course, we promised to look at those uh, details, right? Attack type, uh, attack title, how it happened, wall facts, and so on. So, attack title. Everywhere you look, Equifax, Equifax data breach, 605 million records of 147 million people were exposed to the attackers. This attack type was remote code execution, but it was also exploit usage so basically they used an exploit but they didn't install anything it was a fileless type of attack uh since 2010 fileless attacks started to happen more and more how did this happen they have exploited a vulnerability in the website the official website of equifax which was their customer complaint portion uh, basically, there was a reported uh, vulnerability in the Apache Struts um, uh, system, which allowed for remote code injection. Basically, this is me from home entering their website and allowing me to command their server to do things on my behalf because there's a vulnerability that allows me to do that, which is very, very dangerous, guys. Uh, now, let's uh, let's see some wall facts about this one. Uh, as you know, I like to, uh, to dig deep into these and see exactly the funny things that happen behind. Uh, so this is again a generation five attack, which uh, is very dangerous. This is uh, the generation which we're in right now, generation five and six. So the wall fact is that they were breached on March 10 and the attackers stood undetected. So they were in the network until may guys this is this is for a company like this this is huge right uh, but it can happen to anyone so uh, don't judge them uh, then due to another mistake that was happening back then they managed to move around the network and stay in there without being detected so the mistake was they did not renew a 10 month late expire a certificate for their uh, public key encryption. So basically this is used to encrypt, decrypt, analyze, right? Uh, all of these. Uh, so they did not renew that. Now, another wall fact is that considering the sensitivity of this information, and guys, this is super sensitive information, credit card data, name, uh, social security number, and it's actually something that that is very, very sensitive. They took, 40 days to inform the customers and prepare a plan, which is again, guys, it, th 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 this is dangerous, right? Uh, so this should make us think, where are we start starting accounts? How are we using our data, our passwords, right? So be very careful in today's world. You saw the world as it is, right? Everybody has devices, everybody's connected. I don't know how many, how many of you, and I hope that a lot of you, are reading the uh, policies on the apps on your phone. Things are very dangerous if we look at them. Of course, I don't wanna be doom and gloom over here uh, because I also use the apps on the phone, right? But uh, I just wanna create that awareness, guys, because an informed person is a person that knows how to react. So how could uh, we avoid such an attack? 
two major components, which are also available in the Heimdall patching program. Patch policies, very important. This is mandatory. And software renewal management. So you need to keep track in a centralized location and visible to a lot of IT uh, staff, what are your licenses that you need to renew? When do you need to renew them? And other details. And you can do this uh, also with uh, Heimdall's patching, including the extended patching for custom patching and so on. 